All right, guys, so quick recap for you as far as what happened in part one. First of all, I talked about how I got scammed a couple of years ago while I was in college with a domain appraisal scam. And then I also talked about the different security measures we took for this video to make sure we were safe when we were actually contacting these scammers. Then we started a couple of messages back and forth with a few different scammers and we analyzed a few different scam websites and we found out that many of these sites are all directing to the same strange site called the Commission Multiplier. So I sent this over to a friend of mine to do some research on that website. At the end of the video, I started talking with hacker Olivia about how I would like to invest in Bitcoin and here's what happened next. All right, until the next response. Hello? All right, so we're taking a quick break to uh, get a little coffee going. We've been going at it for uh, about two hours now. We already have a response from her, or him, so. We're gonna look up some facts about, I believe it's a Dallas, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna quiz her on Dallas. Actually, I have a friend from Dallas. I'm gonna text him, and I'm gonna ask him. Does it say Dallas? It does. I'm gonna text him and say, what's something only somebody from Dallas would know? Oh, I wonder if I can get him on the phone. Let me try to get him on the phone. He he usually is pretty good, so he may he may be available. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Ryan, I'm off, dude. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So this is a really random question, but I'm doing a video, um, like kind of like, you ever seen those like confronting a scammer online video type things? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's what I'm doing. I've got this person claiming to be from Dallas, Texas, and I'm trying to find a question I could ask them that would prove whether or not they're actually from Dallas. So I thought you might know something I could ask them. <laughs> I didn't know if there was like Dallas had like a specific I don't know if there was any like local information but it's such a big city that like yeah you would it'd be like saying I'm from New York City you know yeah you know I mean you guess what's the main highway that runs through the city I mean you know what is that highway 75 75 okay I think we'll I think I like that one <laughs> I'll keep you posted on it and I'll, I'll see what she says about the whole Dallas thing interesting very interesting all right thanks for the info man Hey, you bet. All right, enjoy your Sunday. Yeah, you too. All right, Highway 75. We're going to start with what neighborhood are you from, because Dallas is very large. And then we'll say, just to make sure, what's the main highway that goes through Dallas? All right, so in the time that it took us to make our coffees here, we got a response from Kevin and a response from Olivia, and then she followed up. So she said Dallas at 1229, 1236 PM. Why is that? With two question marks. They're playing psychological games here. So here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna follow what my friend Jordan said. We're gonna say, uh, Dallas is a big place. What neighborhood specifically? I have been many times. I love the food and culture. She's making me nervous, man, with the why is that? Like, I feel like I'm, oh, I'm obligated to tell you why I'm asking Hacker Olivia. That's a perfectly reasonable question, but she has somehow made me feel like it's unreasonable. Uh, all right, and now we're gonna, we got a response from Kevin. Hello, I'm Kevin. Yes, I've helped numerous people. It doesn't require manual work actually at all. That's great. Do you have a postpaid carrier with AT&T or Sprint or Verizon? Oh, we also got a response from Olivia already. So hold on, we'll, we'll jump to that in a minute. Kevin, I think I'm gonna say, sorry for being a little bit skeptical. Do you think I could talk to? one of the people you have helped on the phone. Sorry for being a little skeptical, but I have been burned before. Do you think I could talk to one of the people you have helped before in the phone? I even had a typo by accident. But that actually sounds like what somebody may say if they were, you know, a little bit older and they're not up with the lingo. Can I, can I talk in the phone with somebody? Because it's kind of in the phone, you know? Here's the thing, Olivia responded, sorry, I'm not here for pleasure when I asked her about the food and culture. All right, so here's where I'm going to say, basically, 
let her remain in control. Because if she gets the idea that if she gets the idea that I'm not buying it, she's gonna ditch this conversation. So I'm gonna say, "Oh, I didn't mean to waste your time. I know you are very busy. I am sure. I just am nervous and new to all of this, and I don't have a lot of money." Sent. All right, so here's what we're thinking. Because we have already two conversations going on, um, and we're probably gonna do more, we're gonna start like a chart here of like what we have going on. So we got two markers to start with. I got more upstairs if we need them. So first of all, we have Hacker Olivia, just so we keep our story straight, or if we have any random details. So this is, this is the Bitcoin. We don't know much else other than that. We just know that it's something related to Bitcoin. And then we simply have Kevin. And we don't know if Kevin has a title. We don't know if he's Hacker Kevin or Programmer Kevin or anything like that. And all we know is that uh, it's basically something to do with um, a phone carrier. What if I have to do cold calls for him or something like that? All right, so we have Hacker Olivia with a Bitcoin opportunity. Then we have Kevin with a phone carrier opportunity and this is through AT&T and you know we can start some other columns here but these people seem like they're getting back to us pretty quick so we, we don't want to be you know too uh, all over the place we want to be on the ball here with these uh, op opportunities and it seems like they're not very patient either when we don't respond so we got to be on it all right hacker Olivia has asked the Really weird question here. How much Bitcoin do you want to generate? How do we answer this? How would a, how would a 56 year old who doesn't know anything about Bitcoin answer this question? Because let's assume she still thinks I think that Bitcoin is a physical thing that I'm going to get mailed. What would be a good answer to this question that, that would show her that I have no idea what I'm talking about? Well, I assume you will mail it. So how much will shipping be? Sounds reasonable. You know, if you didn't understand what Bitcoin was, you might wonder if perhaps it, it gets put in the mail by Hacker Olivia and it's from Dallas, Texas, and she'll simply mail it to you. Oh, wait. Or since we are local, can I come pick it up? Because after all, we both live in Texas. And I don't believe Houston and Dallas are too far from each other. We were just thinking, what if there is a Jim Lemon who lives in Houston, Texas, which is our alias? Let me do a fast people search and we'll see. If there is, I'm going to mail this guy a Dunkin' Donuts gift card to apologize with no context. Jim Lemon, Houston, Texas. Oh no, there's, there's, there's a Jim Lemon. No, this says Huma, Louisiana. There's a Jim Lemon in Channel View, Texas. Oh my God, I have his address. Oh no, there's a Jim Lemon in Houston, Texas. I have his address. I've got his number. There's another Jim Lemon. He goes by Jamie Lemon. Oh man, I didn't know that was a real name. How could your last name be Lemon? Well, James Lemon and Jamie Lemon. I, I sincerely apologize if there's um, people contacting you uh, regarding this. And I will send you a Dunkin' Donuts gift card uh, to apologize. Oh my gosh, she's going along with it. She is going along with the fact that I think you can physically mail Bitcoin. And she goes, I will mail it, sir. So next question would be, I'll say, okay, great. So what do you need from me? I can't believe that she isn't correcting me on the fact that you don't mail Bitcoin. Well, I assume you mail it, so how much will shipping be? I will mail it, sir. Doesn't even try to correct me on the fact that it's a digital currency. All right, she just responded, how much do you want to generate so I can let you know the cost? Should we start with one? What would be, because he doesn't have any idea. <laughs> Jim has no idea the value of a Bitcoin. He thinks it's going to be mailed to him. So in a roll of quarters, there's 40. That's worth $10. So let's start with that. 40 Bitcoin? 40 Bitcoin. We'll pretend I don't, uh, we'll pretend I'm equating it to the value of a quarter. All right. I even put a typo in there, which makes it seem more legit. Well, there are four quarters and a dollar. So in a roll of quarters, you have 40 worth, $10. So let's start with 40. 40 Bitcoin, that's a reasonable number of Bitcoin to generate. That's only worth, you know, probably a little under $35,000, but let's do it, let's generate it, you know? If you didn't know what a Bitcoin was, you might think it's worth a quarter. 
and then she's gonna mail you a roll of bitcoins to Houston, Texas, where you're then going to use that money to retire. That's that's how this all works. It's, this is it, this is the ticket. I really do wonder if she's gonna like actually, oh, she said okay. <laughs> she literally just said okay, really? You're not gonna correct me on the fact that I just equated the value of a Bitcoin to the value of a quarter. All right, so I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna say, great, what, what will that, so what will that cost? I'm gonna do two question marks too to mirror her because that's what she's been doing. I've grown rather fond of Hacker Olivia here. You know, I feel like she'll be on my Christmas card list and whatnot. Uh, we've established, you know, quite the relationship here. Now, Kevin, on the other hand, he's, he's going ice cold here. It's, it's been, you know, about 17 minutes and he hasn't responded. So it's probably because I asked him if we could get on the phone with one of his past students. So maybe he's just going to say, nope, all right, this guy's no good. Or maybe, I mean, I, I really want to get one of these people on the phone here, you know? So uh, that may come from, from more messages to different people. Dude, I'm getting nervous. Kevin responded immediately. Well, took him 20 minutes, pretty quickly. I don't mind, yes for sure, I can give you the number if you wish. He's literally giving me a number of one of his students that I can call, like I'm literally about to call this scammer on the phone. Alright, I'm gonna say I am available now to call him. Oh wait, he has to call me to go, okay, I'm available now to call, please call my number. 832-271, dude, <laughs> I'm nervous. 7523, you got your ringer on? 832-271-7523. And then what I'm gonna do is at the end of it, write Jim. Cause that seems like something somebody would do if they were like, you know, yeah. a little bit older. Here's my number, Jim. All right, Jim. <laughs> oh man, I'm nervous. All right, I guess we wait and see. <laughs> I don't even wanna hold it, man, I'm scared gonna pop up and I'm gonna have to talk to this guy. So in the meantime, guys, I did wanna show you this. Like people do legitimately fall for these scams. Like you may think that it's like, who would believe this stuff? But people honestly do. I'm not gonna show you the person's name, but this was a comment I got on my YouTube channel. Someone on Facebook said, if I give her 80 bucks, she will give me $800 in 10 minutes using Forex. She's scamming me, right? Please help, I know nothing about this, but I want to learn. I also don't want to lose the 80 bucks. I am short on rent and need to make cash quick. I am not dumb, I just don't know much about this subject, thank you. And I responded, yes, that is 100% a scam. Oh, he gave me a number, so I gotta call them. We'll have to test that out. I wonder if I can make a call through this. We'll have to try it out now. So we have a number from Jim, or no, from Kevin here. We have to just test this out and see if I can make a call through the computer. So I'm gonna test this out now. So Kevin is awaiting for us to proceed. He's given us a number. We've set up Google Voice, so we've tested it out, so we know that when we call him, uh, it's gonna show up as the, as the Houston, Texas Google Voice number, So, and we're connected to the VPN, so we're all protected. Do I, do I make my voice different? Like, what am I gonna do? Oh, uh, hello, uh, this is Jim, the money-making opportunity. I was yeah. wondering about that money-making opportunity. Uh, hello, my name's Jim. <laughs> no, man, like my hand is shaking. I'm not even kidding. Like, so just to follow up here, Kevin has an opportunity for me to make money that involves a phone carrier. I asked him if I could talk to one of his students and he said, okay, yes, I can. So that's who I'm calling. 702-527-1976. I'll put this on speaker. I'll message him again and say, <clears throat> should I call you? Maybe because we let some time pass. All right, so while we're waiting, let's go ahead and send a response to Hacker Olivia who wants me to send $74. I'm gonna say, 
How do I send? How do I mail you the money? How do I mail you the money is a better way to say that because that that makes sense for somebody who's you know a little bit older. Okay, I am ready. How do I mail you the money? And we are awaiting a response from Kevin to talk to one of his students who he's helped to make a lot of money. I'm excited, but I'm I don't know. I'm excited in a weird way because like this doesn't go anywhere good. Like I guess the the thing is we are going to help people realize that these scams are out there and hopefully some people will see this and then they won't get scammed themselves. But as far as what we're about to go through here, I'm afraid of this conversation because I think I'm going to have to say things like, oh, well, let me think about it. Oh, let me get back to you. And this guy's probably really good at what he does. He's probably good at sales. So he's going to be pushing me. He's going to be saying, no, let's make a decision now. No, let's get your credit card now. So I think he's going to be very aggressive and pushy with me. And I think I'm going to get nervous because like, I don't, <laughs> I don't deal with confrontation. Well, that's just part of how I am. Okay. You're going to go through. Okay. So this is from hacker Olivia. You're going to pay through PayPal or Bitcoin. So here's the thing. What is he, he wouldn't know what PayPal is. I'm going to say, can't I just mail you a check? Do you think that would be reasonable? I'm going to say, I don't do online banking. Can I mail you a check? You think that would be good? I mean, 74 bucks, I'd almost be willing to send it. But in order to do that, I have to link my bank account and stuff. Like there's no good way to do this. Can I, maybe I'll say, can I give you a, can I do a money pack? Money pack would work because I can buy a money pack. And there's no way to trace that to you. And it's not, tra it's like buying a gift card. I'll say, I'm a little weird, I'm a little worried about a record of this. What about a gift card or money pack? Because if it's 74 bucks, we'll go to, we'll go right now and buy a money pack. Cause I thought she was going to hit me with like 10 grand, but I'm pretty sure this is just the tripwire for them where they're trying to get you to send a small amount of money. That way they know that you will. And then she's probably going to say, Oh, your, your Bitcoin package that we mailed to you got stuck in the post office and now you got to send money to get it released or something like that. Like I bet you it continues to elaborate. All right. So I was able to appeal to Olivia's softer side and I got her to agree to uh, let me send her a gift card. So she's specifying a vanilla visa gift card. Um, she wants 74 bucks, you know, for the video. Oh, that was this one. Tyler. Oh, Tyler got back to us regarding the websites. He says, I can take a look at where the server is located and what name the websites are registered under. Perfect. So I'm gonna send him a list of those websites for him to do a little analysis for us. And in the meantime, we are gonna go get, cause here's the thing, I thought she was gonna ask me for 500 bucks. 75 bucks for the video, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna go to CVS right now, I'm gonna buy a $75 vanilla gift card and then we're gonna send her the code. And then I probably will never hear from her again, but we're just going to go down the rabbit hole and see what happens and see where she goes from there and what her excuse is for why. Or maybe she'll just claim she mailed it. She hasn't even asked me for my address. How is she going to mail it? So many questions. But the next step, we're going to go buy that gift card. So we'll look, go ahead and update the progress of the board. Hacker Olivia, she's going to send us 40 Bitcoin. In fact, she's going to do it by mail. Even more interesting because I didn't know you could mail a Bitcoin. You can actually print Bitcoin on paper and mail it, but there's no chance that we're going to actually get Bitcoin. She it was asking us for $74 and I offered to send her 75 and she wants me to get a $75 Visa gift card, which we are going to go to CVS now and purchase that gift card. Now, on the other hand, we have Kevin. We talked to him and he said that he's going to get us on a call with a past student of his that he helped. So let's just write past student. We don't know his name. And uh, we called him and we got no answer. So we are waiting to hear back from him as far as a better time to potentially reach him. So now uh, let's go to CBS and uh, go ahead and get that gift card so we can continue on with Hacker Olivia and more importantly, get my 40 Bitcoin in the mail. All right, so we heard back from Kevin and he's like trying to get the details here. Like he just said, I said, I'm ready for the call. He said, maybe the person isn't around. Then he followed up and he said, okay, great. 
I need your username, password, security question and answers as well as your address. He literally wants all of the details for my phone carrier to hack my phone and get into my phone. He probably is literally attempting to hack into everything. Into, if you get your phone, then you have the ability to get someone's two-factor authentication. And then assuming he gets my passwords, he could literally get into anything he wanted. Gmail, bank accounts, anything. He could literally probably get into any information he needs to about me. So I'm gonna respond and I'm gonna say, can I call you? I wanna get him on the phone and I wanna to talk to him about why he needs all this information. I, I really, I'm just dead set on getting somebody on the phone here. Oh, he said, sure. He said, sure, we can call him. So I think it's time to call. What do you think? I mean, we said we wanted to go as far as this will go. 917-791-6453. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> Talk to Kevin. Hello, I'm looking for, uh, is this Kevin? Yeah, Kevin. Is this Jim? Yes, uh, this is Jim Lemon, Houston, Texas. I was uh, uh, chatting with you back and forth on the text, and um, I was hoping to talk to one of your students, but uh, I know that uh, your student was unavailable, or whoever you had helped. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, the, I guess I'm just a little bit skeptical and a little nervous because I've never done the money making online. I'm a, I'm a plumber by trade and uh, where I, you know, we got laid off from a job and like I said, I've got a bum shoulder and I'm really not trying to go back into that work because uh, it's just really beating me up, man. Uh, so... Yeah, I totally understand. Okay, yeah, and uh, so I guess I'm just kind of wanting to make sure you get a little more information, maybe kind of get to know you a little bit since you'll be my new boss and kind of, uh, you know, get some information. Why did he hang up? I don't know. What? I don't even understand what happened. Why did he hang up? We didn't even... Oh, that's weird. I don't, I don't know what he would possibly gain from that. So we're just going to have to call him up again. Come on, Kevin. The text now subscriber you were trying All to... Right. So, do we continue down the rabbit hole with Kevin or should we move on? In the meantime, I did hear back from Tyler. So we have some information on those uh, two websites. And this is what he said. Uh, he said, both of those websites resolve to the same server. He gave us the IP address. And neither domain name has any info on contacting the owner, in parentheses, which has become pretty common for privacy reasons. An IP lookup, that's weird. An IP lookup on the server shows it's based in Houston, Texas, which is where we made our Google Voice number out of. What are the odds of that? It all comes back to Houston, Texas. Dude, that's weird, man. An IP lookup on the server shows it's based in Houston, Texas under a corporate ISP, meaning the owner is most likely using a web host like GoDaddy instead of hosting it themselves. There isn't anything particularly strange about the domain name or server information. What is going on? What are the odds of that? Because when I set up the Google Voice number, it said put in your location. And I randomly just picked Houston, Texas. And then that just so happens to be the exact location of the servers for the people running that work from home scam. Am I the scammer? <laughs> now that's an utter coincidence. And I guess Houston, Texas is a big place. So it's a, isn't that big of a coincidence. All right, so we have been left here on basically with nothing from Kevin. I said, let me know when to call back at 149. It's 153. 
So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna call him one more time. Try to get him on the phone. If he doesn't get on the phone, we're gonna block the number. That way the communication is just ended. And then we're gonna go get that money pack card, the $75 or the $75 Visa gift card. And we're gonna continue on with Hacker Olivia. And we're gonna send her 75 bucks and we'll see where that goes. So let's try him one more time. And then um, if not, we'll, we'll continue on and we'll head to CBS. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and block this person now. We'll delete all this stuff so that way that's no longer in here, and we will stick to uh, our conversations with Hacker Olivia, and we'll get our money pack card or Visa card to send to her. All right, so in between these conversations, guys, I want to jump on another one of these websites. So these were two comments that were on one of my videos here. This one says, "Start in five minutes." 3k per week best profitable broker site between you and the companies to buy and sell shares and it's called moneyonlineinvestment.com um, and then there's a referral code that this person included at the end so we're gonna visit that website let me just again make sure I'm on my I'm on the VPN so we're gonna visit this website and see what this is here so it's called money online investment invest online make money best way to secure your money our website provides synthetic stock market where you can purchase digital shares of internet websites. <laughs> How anybody believes this stuff, like I don't, I get it. Like if you don't, like the only reason I'm saying that is because I've looked at, I've been investing, I've been doing this for three years, you know, or even doing videos for three years, I've been investing for more like five or six. So how, but people who don't know, you wouldn't know. You'd hear this and you'd say, well, that could be right. Some stocks are rising in price by up to 80% per month. That profit from their sale can be very high. It's just, oh, this is just scary. They're, look at what they're offering shares of here. Offering shares of App Making Central. Um, we just need funds to buy softwares. You need an app, question mark? You need an app? Do you? There you go. 40, 460% ROI, $3 per share. Oh my God, this is utter scam. Custom made, we create masterpieces that perfectly captures role or soul romance. Photo Vigilia Genin. I am a photographer who makes cool pictures for you. I don't even understand what this is. Like you're funding these small websites, Swiss watches, various methods of payments, top projects, new projects. So it's like a, I don't know, this is, this is just a fake. They're even saying right here, look at this. Invest with no risk. That's impossible. There's no such thing as a no risk investment out there where if you're investing, there's always some risk. So that right off the bat is a huge red flag. So I've seen enough here. We're not going to do anything with this website, but it's just, I guess it's just disappointing that people have legitimately spent time. Like this took time. Like somebody built this website with the sole purpose of taking money from people for no reason, like why, I don't understand why people build these illegitimate things. Like it would be, you can build a legitimate business that makes money. Like you could build a blog that makes money in a legitimate way, but instead people dedicate their time to making, you know, these scam websites like this. And then they've got these people running around doing referrals and affiliate marketing for them for these completely illegitimate, illegitimate websites. So it's just crazy to see this. All right, so we're going to go to CVS now and we're going to get our uh, $75 Visa gift card. Uh, just to be careful, we are going to arm my security system just in case Hacker or Olivia or Kevin decide to pay us a visit. So uh, we are officially armed and we are heading to CVS. All right, so we're at CVS now. We're gonna go in and buy the $75 vanilla gift card and I'm gonna get a pack of gum because I need a pack of gum and I also think it just makes it look a little bit less weird. Um, I was actually thinking about telling the cashier like, hey, I'm buying some Bitcoin from this person online just to see if they would say anything, but um, probably because I'm younger they wouldn't, but I bet you if an older person went in and said that, uh, they would hopefully suggest to them that they don't do that because it could be a scam. Uh, but yeah, let's go in now. We'll try to low key get some footage and I will get my uh, get my gift card and then we'll get our money over to Hacker Olivia. Uh, is this the vanilla? Oh yeah, this is. So this is uh, 20 to 50 bucks. 
595 charge, so we'll get this one and put 75 on it. Common scams include requests related to lotteries, taxes, a new job, and helping someone in need. But we're not doing any of that. We're doing Bitcoin. 80, 95. To prevent damage, please do not place your item in bagging area. All right, so we have our $75 gift card in hand. Uh, it was interesting too, because on the pin pad, as we were checking out, when I purchased the gift card, it talked about scams and potentially sending money for jobs and whatnot. So there was actually an automated message that I think um, I'm going the wrong way for Subway, so I'm gonna turn around in a minute. But anyway, it was kind of sending uh, or showing you like if you're sending money, uh, it may be a scam. So it seems like they are in a way, at least having that prompt there to hopefully prevent people from this type of thing happening. But it didn't mention Bitcoin, so you know, maybe we're good. I'm joking, we're not good. We're, we're going to throw away, you know, 75 bucks plus the cost of the actual card itself, which I think was 595. So we're throwing away 80 bucks, but for the lesson of the video, um, you know, I think it's worth it. And it really does help if you guys could, sh you know, share this video with more people. That'll just help this get shown to more people and hopefully prevent, uh, you know, more people getting scammed and uh, going down this rabbit hole. So we have ourselves a $75 Visa Vanilla. We're about to knowingly send this information to a uh, to an absolute blatant scammer online. And uh, here we are. So we had some Subway and um, that's about the highlight of this day. Um, and so she basically asked us, which one did we get? I'm gonna say Visa Vanilla, and I'm gonna make an attempt to try to get her on the phone. I'm gonna say I'm not comfortable sending the information on the internet. Can we talk on the phone? I'll give you the code over the phone, which I will, because that's what I'm gonna do. She said, okay. So I'm gonna say, can I call you and give you the numbers on the phone. I only need the front and back pick with the receipt. Oh. Okay. Well, we don't we don't have the receipt, do we? I don't have the receipt. Maybe it's in my car. Let me go to uh, you know what? Yeah, I don't know if I want to I want to say I threw away the receipt, but I can send you a front and back of the card. Talk on the phone quick. Ooh, that was my fireplace. I thought it was Kevin. I wonder if they need the receipt. I'm, I don't really want to send them the receipt because no. the receipt has my, it shows what CVS it was purchased from. And then they know like the state and city I live in and that's where I draw the line with this because that's, that's just weird. So, we'll see what she says. Send the picture. I bet what's gonna happen is as soon as we send these photos of this gift card, she's probably just gonna block this number. You know what I mean? Because she's probably using Google Voice too. He or she, I mean, uh, who knows? It said Hacker Olivia, but I'm assuming they're just gonna block the number. Or see, I'm also curious if that's all they're looking to get is 75 bucks, or are they gonna continue the scam and try to get me to send them more money? You know, I'm really curious to see what they do here. Oh, I say we just send them the money then, right? Yeah, we let's just send them the money and see if my Bitcoins get put in the mail. Trying to think, this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done in my entire life with $75. I can't think of anything else that would have been more of a blatant waste of money. But um, you know what? For the sake of the video, let's send $75 to Hacker Olivia. Uh, and see what happens. So I think we'll have to do it on your phone because I'm gonna have to take a photo of it. So let's go ahead and get this done. So we gotta do a uh, front and back. So we'll send that one. And you can see up there, our uh, photos have sent. So now we see if we get a response which I think this may be the point where we never hear from Hacker Olivia again. I'm curious if we do though, I wonder how far this goes.